Happy Wilderness Wednesday. We're going in the wild. I don't know, are you going in the wild? I'm going in the wild today. Wilderness Wednesday. So, I was scrolling through my Facebook feed today, and welcome, welcome to Magical Mothering Men Motivation. It's Wilderness Wednesday. I'm Stephanie Matthews, and uh, as you hop on, please say hello, and if you're watching the replay, please say hello so I can see. Just type in hi. It takes 30 seconds. That way I can see you and know that you were with me today. So, magical wilderness time. I love Wilderness Wednesdays, even if, like, it's not my scheduled day to be in the wild. I do have, like, sometimes my rhythm gets a bit off, but today does happen to be a day that we're going to spend in the wild. And I was going through my Facebook feed today, and I was seeing that there's a lot of people in the Florida Keys that are getting uh, evacuated because of the hurricane. And I know that some of the women in this tribe are in Texas. And so with the wild, it's not just always wilderness and peace and serenity. Good morning, Krista. Um, being in the wild, there can be storms, right? And I loved this thought that came to me. I don't love the fact that people are uh, in a space of you know, kind of turmoil right now. That is not what I love. I am sending lots of prayers and lots of support to the people that are going through, um, still cleaning up their lives in Texas and then sending prayers to those that are in Florida right now, kind of gearing up towards what is happening there. But I do love the insights that we get from this aspect. Just because there is a storm doesn't make it bad that makes sense. So often we see a storm coming, whether it's a physical storm, like the people that are actually dealing with physically, or an emotional storm, or a storm in our marriage, or a storm in our kids' lives. You know, we, we sometimes see these storms and we look at them from a judgment point of view of saying this storm is bad, this storm is scary. And while the storm, yes, might be scary, yes, while the experience might cause fear, what can we do within the storm? How do we really want to be? And going right back to our card for the week of awareness, how can we bring awareness of our emotions? How can we bring awareness of who and what we truly desire to be into our storms, either physically, emotionally, mentally, physically? And I was thinking about this yesterday. We went and saw the herbalist for my son, which some of you know, some of you do not know. Um, my son has had a kidney, something going on with his kidneys since he was about four months old. Um, and it was very apparent, and we weren't sure if he was going to lose his kidneys. Hello, Raven! Um, and so we've been seeing an herbalist, and yesterday it struck me as we came home with like this giant bag of homeopathics that I've got to give three times a day, and you know, got to kind of orient, and it was like just a reminder of eating really clean. Of, you know, we went to the beach and had birthday cake and had, you know, Trader Joe's marshmallows. And then it was like the reality of it struck me. And it wasn't like it was good or bad. It was just this is the storm that we are in right now, right? And I could see it and I could have peace within the storm or I can be really scared of what the storm's going to create. Either way is not. A good or a bad that brings judgment again and simply just being aware of wow I've been riding this kind of storm in this particular aspect and even seeing it as a storm could be a judgment right and yet allowing ourselves to have a choice of being aware what do we choose you know I was very scared for years, years around my son's kidney aspect. 
And until I finally said, I will trust that there is something out there and there is a way of living that will heal his body. His body was given to him. And I trust, I truly trust that the earth, nature, there's something that can heal him. And I know this. And I just stepped back. And I simply became aware of the fear that was running my life throughout this whole experience. And I became aware of the fact that no matter if I'm scared or if I'm controlling, if I manipulate, if I, if I try to force something, that's not going to actually change anything, right? He'll actually probably even feel that and cause more stress on his kidneys because that's what the kidneys do. And so this whole aspect of awareness of not living in fear, but living in trust, how can we trust ourselves to really know what is best? And I truly believe that nature is one of our biggest guides. And I always get goosebumps when I like connect that for myself and for others. Nature the wild, us remembering that we are wild. We are not, you know, these, yes, we are these tame creatures compared to some of the other creatures, but you know what? Our minds can make us even more wild than the scariest creatures out there, right? I mean, think about what the minds have done through civilizations, through different aspects. Our minds are powerful, and yet... When we go into the wild, there is like this shift that happens. We're no longer, if you're really in tune with nature, and I think that some people um, who even do this, there's there's like a, a the greed and the envy and all of these kind of things that the mind can create fall away in nature because you can you can see with a different mind's eye. You have a different awareness. And I'm bringing this up because I think it's really important to see different aspects of ourselves so often. And I think this awareness card this week has really helped me see that um, there is some jealousy in me. You know what I mean? And there is envy at times. And I went to an energy class last night and we did an amazing uh, healing and we were able to really look at what, like, she, it was funny, she called it, like, look at your nemesis. And sometimes, you know, there was people's husbands that they had to really look at, that that was, like, the root of their their discord in their lives, or their marriages, or their, um, their money was some people's. And I really, I got a thought that, like, my magical life, the life that I really want to be living, of traveling more full time, of, you know, holding healing circles around fires and creating this healing space, that's really what I desire. And I saw that and it was like, she said, imagine your nemesis. And I immediately got the vision of my magical life, of the life that I actually really desire. And I went, how interesting that what I so desire is actually something that I'm now like pushing against. Do you ever feel like this where you just feel like if you could just have this one thing, life would finally like be fine, right? And I realized that that was kind of like what I had created out of what I really desired. And sometimes it's just creating an awareness around what is really truly yeah Krista all the time yeah and what is really truly what we desire and yet what are we doing to push it away are we desiring it so much that we're actually making making it impossible to get whoa right that is awareness and so um we we did a couple different aspects of this um exercise and we're actually going to do it tonight. I'm going to lead us through this energetic healing tonight in the sisterhood with our generational themes. And because we really want to stop passing these things on to our children. Good morning, Crystal. 
Um, as we live and as we are, we want to stop passing these generational themes onto our kids. We don't want to pass on the, the guilt and the shame and the judgment and the self-criticism, right? This was a big aspect of why I'm not in my magical life, because I'm actually scared. And I realized that I was scared that if I said, okay, everybody, I'm having, as a hummingbird literally just like went, bloop, hi, sweet hummingbird, um, magic, right? So um, as we see, you know, I was really scared that if I said, hey, everybody, I'm having these healing retreats that nobody would show up. And that's, my, that's the base of my fear, is if I put myself out there in a way and create this space and create something that people will say, well, who are you to heal? Or who are you? You know what I mean? I had these thoughts still. And I know that a lot of you know that I've been working on these thoughts for over a year now. And it was still there. That was still like my foundation. And I went, wait a second. This isn't about me. This isn't about like, oh, are people going to want me? That's not what this is about. And yet my small little ego mind is still scared that if I put myself out there, I might get hurt. And I have to remember that what I'm doing is not about my small little ego mind. What I'm doing out there in the world is about giving. And when we shift this perspective of it's not about me anymore, how can I support? How can I heal? How can I give more? Which is really what pushed me to do this Facebook Live every morning is how can I give more? How can I be present to the women of this tribe? How can I create connection and um, awareness and understanding, not just for myself, but how can we gather together each day? And this has really pushed me to come from a place of giving and to come from a place of gratitude that I even have an amazing tribe of women connected. I mean, I find this so empowering that there are so many magical women in this group already. And that there truly is kind of this building up, right? And I, I can see that every time, and I see this in even the women, that every time we're giving from a place of fear of, oh, well, somebody, is that okay with somebody? Or are they kind of going to get mad if I say this? And it's, you kind of just have to let all that go. You have to stop being scared of pleasing everybody and stepping into who we truly are and giving from a place of purely giving and giving from a place of saying, you know what? I know people aren't going to necessarily like what I have to say, especially when it comes to pushing against people's, you know, egos and saying, if you're burnt out, if you're not, you know, fulfilled and passionate, then you're giving from a place of selfishness. You're giving from a place of getting. When we give from a place of giving, there is this self-renewing energy. And while you not, might not always have the passion to continue with that, you can always stay in inspiration, which I feel are very different. There is this passion that comes from a knowing of like we're on the right track. Mommy, and I sometimes to eat. I, I asked you before I started, I'll be done in just a few minutes. Go grab a carrot or an but apple. I don't want a carrot or an apple. Okay. There's grapes. Um, sorry. And so... I want something else. Frozen. I don't have anything frozen. And so coming from a place... <laughs> come sit with me or come watch a show. Either one. Well, I want you to see what I want. What is there? Oh, there is nothing in there. Sorry, guys. Frozen. There's no frozen. You dropped all the coconut ice cream. No. <laughs> I just did it. So, coming from a place of giving to give without oh, coming yeah. from a place I'm of giving right. to receive. See. So, I guess I have well, to go I... and come from a place of giving right now rather than from a place of giving here. So, that's that. 
say, uh, let us know what you're going to be doing for Wilderness Wednesday, how you're going to reconnect and find your wild self within nature. What can you do to like see the storms of your life or go into the nature aspect of the wildness of you? Where do you want to be giving? What are you giving now that doesn't feel good, right? How often do we give to our kids out of a sense of like duty? I want something cool, jelly sandwich. Okay, go, go bring me a tortilla. And then- No, I want you to bring from me a tortilla. A point of giving to give. So, love to all of you. I will talk to you tomorrow for Thoughtful Thursday. Bye-bye.